Well, there you go. With 2024 almost here, I think it's high time I wrap things up. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel, you're with Chris and today I'll be wrapping up 2023 in my final video of the year. I believe I had a pretty decent year of reading, even though I did have a couple of slumps along the way, I did end up finishing pretty strong at the time of filming this video. Now even though there is a few more days to go until the 31st of December, I'm hoping to clear off my plate with a few more reads, just so that I can almost get over the finish line for my Goodreads reading challenge for the year. We'll see how that goes but uh, got a little bit to do between now and then to achieve that so uh, fingers crossed on that one but I would like to start off summing up the year with some statistics so starting with the amount of videos uploaded I managed to upload 86 videos this year, which I think equates or averages out to about one and a half videos per week, which is a little bit down on last year, I think. But uh, there were a couple of bouts during the year where I had mental exhaustion and just the mere thought of jumping on the camera uh, was the last thing on my mind at those particular times. But uh, have certainly come good uh, in the last few months of the year where that was probably one of my most productive uh, periods. Subscribers at the time of filming this currently sit at 383 and that's absolutely fine. I always knew going into this that it would be a slow burn. I know there are other booktubers that have uh, that have meteoric rises and uh, good on them because uh, you know seeing someone like uh, John over at uh, Talking Story for instance he is going great guns at the moment. He um, it seems like only a few days ago that he hit a thousand subscribers and I believe as of this weekend he's just clocked over 2,000 subscribers and uh, very well deserved because his channel is a lot of fun. He's very laid back. He um, is very animated and excited about his books, which is very contagious. So I always like uh, um, watching John's channel. Thank you, John. And my uh, let's move on to my most popular video of the year. And strangely enough, it was my Jack Reacher first um, video reading project, which uh, I've now abandoned, uh, I'm ashamed to say. But that one was where I reviewed my reread of Killing Floor, which came in with 264 views this year, which uh, was my highest performing video, which wasn't too bad. It just shows that uh, Jack Reacher content and Jack Ryan content are fairly popular on the channel and people uh, are enjoying it, which is great. And I may even do a bit more Jack Reacher content uh, next year as well. The lowest performing video was my, strangely enough with this one, was my review of the Australian crime novel Low Bridge by Lucy Campbell. This one um, was one of my, well, it's probably the, uh, the top debut novel I read this year, which is uh, a pretty big call. And uh, that one had 15 uh, reviews. Now I'm not sure if it's because it's an Australian author or not, uh, why it performed um, so badly, but uh, you know, it, it is what it is. And uh, the figures don't lie, but uh, you know, I'm not uh, overly cut about it, but uh, it's just interesting how uh, the different data indicates what is a popular video and what is an unpopular video. I find it very interesting. Okay, now, at the time of filming this, so my current target for the Goodreads reading challenge for this year for me was 85 books, which was pretty ambitious uh, from the outset. And I probably, using hindsight, which they say is 2020, I probably should have been a little bit more conservative, but uh, I'm currently at 72. So I've got 13 more books to read before now and the 31st of December. It's not impossible, okay? I'm halfway through the latest um, uh, Frieda McFadden uh, book, The Housemaid's Secret. So I should polish that off tonight, today being Sunday. Uh, I've got a bit of time off from work. So I should be able to smash through that tonight and then move on to this bad boy here, which I got for Christmas, 
which is called Assassin 18 by John Brownlow. I remember loving the first book of the series last year called um, 17. And uh, this one is going to be a cracker. And it's only going to be a very quick read for me. I'm anticipating maybe two days because something that I love in a thriller with a main ingredient that uh, makes a good read for me is this one has, let's have a look here, look at this, 186 chapters, which indicates to me that all the chapters are going to be very short going to be very addictive if a lot of the chapters end on a cliffhanger I'm going to have no choice but to keep turning those pages so I've got that one to smash through I've also got the rest of Death Note to go as well now I currently have I think about two four six maybe eight more volumes to go now manga is very very quick to read so i should be able to smash that through in the next week or so and that will almost bring me up to my total so if i get to the 30th of december and i'm at say 84 of 85 books i might just pull out something like rita hayworth and shawshank redemption uh it sort of counts because they have uh, Hotter and Stout and have released the story just on its own in one self-contained book. You know, it's classed as a book, isn't it? So I might just have to do something in order to get right on the line. Doesn't matter if I don't go over as long as I achieve it. And if I don't achieve it for whatever reason, if any um, distractions or delays pop up, then uh, I'll just wear whatever the uh, amount is that I finish on. Okay, now let's talk about my favourite books of the year. Now, I managed to um, pull off something a little bit differently in previous years. I know last year I did a 20 to 1. So I took my 20 favourite books from uh, 2022 and collated them and counted down from 20 right down to 1. Now, that was an impossible task. It was really, really hard. And it, um, you know, the books number 1 and 2, like the last four books, up until the last minute were shuffling for position so I weren't quite sure of what would be the number one book and um, number two book three and four and such forth so this year I thought um, you know I don't want to do another 20 to 1 I made up my own first annual bookish brilliance awards which went up on the channel recently and I was over the moon with this experiment because to be honest I didn't know how it was going to go what I wanted to do was design it much like the Oscars, the Academy Awards, where I created um, some categories. And what I did was uh, looked on my year in reading page on Goodreads so that I had all the JPEGs there to refer to and spent a lot of time reflecting and procrastinating about what I liked about which book and which books would make the cut um, for this particular list. Now, the thing is, it was uh, pretty good because there were about 50 odd nominations. So what I did was I took all the books I really, really liked and I created nomination lists and then from those lists I picked a winner. So it was very much like um, the Oscars where there were five or six nominees for different categories and uh, there was a clear winner of every one which I was very, very happy with my selection. So um, if you haven't seen the uh, Bookish Brilliance Awards that I put up on the channel, um, just ignore this next bit. But uh, if you have, I'm just going to go over these now and just sum up all the winners in each category okay and then we'll eventually get to my book of the year which is a very convincing winner and I was absolutely over the moon that that book became my book of the year and there are many reasons why uh, this book ticked a lot of boxes so let's start with the best cover and that was a clear winner as well and uh, I decided that uh, my best friend's exorcism was a very very worthy winner of that category the next category I had was Best Plot Twist, and that was a clear winner as well. There was uh, It was Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. Uh, now, in terms of plot twists, this one um, outdid the rest of the competition because it didn't have just one twist at the end, it had two, which absolutely left me reeling, and I had to wait a few days to do my review of that one up on the channel because uh, I had to gather my thoughts because that's how much it affected me. The next category was the best emotional trigger. What sustained my emotional reaction throughout the whole book? Out of the nominations, there were key points in a book that um, affected me emotionally, but the clear winner for this one was Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. For a very good reason, it sustained my emotional um, 
it, it tugged on my heartstrings all through the book. There weren't just one or two moments here and there like uh, there were with other books. This one sustained my emotional engagement all the way through the book from start to finish. Instant rapport um, with the main character and, uh, you know, who can forget the little mouse Algernon himself uh, from that one. But uh, again, a very clear winner out of the nominees. Uh, the next one I had was Best Short Story by... Um, uh, this one was Big Bad by Chandler Baker. It was a new take on the old werewolf trope, but I hadn't read anything like it. It wasn't just your standard werewolf story. It was done with a twist at the end. It was done very, very cleverly um, on, uh, you know, the final reveal wasn't done until the end, and there were subtle little clues left uh, leading up to the climax, but... Um, it was a very, very clear winner there for me as well. So all these winners in these categories, the decisions weren't made lightly because there were very good quality nominees as well um, in that um, video I did. And the next one I had was the best debut novel, which was Low Bridge by Lucy Campbell, which ironically enough was my lowest performing video, but uh, it was an Aussie crime at its absolute best. Uh, there was a really good mystery and how uh, that mystery got solved at the end was very very good. It had a really good twist. The writing was very professional and uh, You wouldn't think that Lucy Campbell was a first-time author uh, of fiction I know she uh, writes non-fiction and writes for periodicals and things like that But the writing was so strong you would have thought it might have been her fifth or sixth book the next uh category was best book hangover now how i defined that was this was a book that kept me up late at night forcing me to make another cup of coffee in order to finish the thing because i just had to finish it i had to find out what happens and uh there were quite a few good contenders for this one let me tell you but there can, can be only one winner and that was the year of the locust by terry hayes okay now my best surprise hit this is something that it's a book uh, that you know i didn't know anything about so i go into it not knowing too much and so it's a surprise and to make it a surprise hit it has to reinforce for me how glad i was i picked it up without knowing too much about it you know you're taking a bit of a leap of faith in a book which is uh what um, this category is all about how it surprises me um, didn't know what to think going in and by the time I finished the book I thought wow this book was amazing and again that was The Year of the Locust by Terry Hayes okay and there was also Best New Author so the best new author I discovered in 2023 and that was a clear winner as well Terry Hayes author of The Year of the Locust and then I had another category, which is a bit different. I, I like to read series, and especially thriller series. And I thought, well, let's make, let's make up a category which highlights the best series entry. So all the series I read, there were about four or five nominees, and it was the, my favourite book um, out of whatever series it related to. And in this case, it was Weapons Grade by Don Bentley, uh, part of the Jack Ryan verse. It was a very clear winner. I really, really enjoyed that one. And, of course, the final category, which you save the best for last, and that is the best overall book for 2023, and that was The Year of the Locust by Terry Hayes. So it won four categories. And it's a clear winner. And after, you know, I think I've had the Bookish Brilliance Awards up for about a week, a bit over a week, and I'm still very happy with that decision. So this kind of format for picking out my favorite books of the year was very honest, and the results speak for themselves. Obviously, a book that won uh, four categories is going to be a clear contender for the top book, and there were so many good books I read this year, and I think I had a, no, no less than six nominations or nominees for this category. And I'm absolutely happy with the decision. And it just proves how this experiment did work. I'm not weren't, sure, weren't quite sure how it was going to go, but uh, it worked out very, very well. And that book ticked so many boxes for me. I've reviewed it in detail on the channel if you haven't checked that out yet. All right, let's move on now to DNFs. I only had two DNFs this year. The first one was very early in the year, and that was, uh, embarrassingly so, uh, Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. I was optimistic late last year. I thought, right, I'm gonna read this thing. I'm gonna cross this off the bucket list. And I did okay. I got through two thirds of it. 
before things started to get boring. I mean, it, it was a really good beginning, and then it became complex with the lengths that um, uh, the main character went through to get revenge, and uh, it became a little bit tiresome for me. I think I need to be a little bit older and a bit more mature, I reckon, to enjoy um, fiction of this period and who knows I may pick it up again one day we'll just see how we go and the other DNF was The Drowning by Brian Brown this one was a record DNF for me because I like to be pretty generous before I DNF a book and this one guys it only took 12 pages for me to DNF it the writing was, um, you know, the, the, the story, the mystery, uh, the crime had uh, a lot of potential but it was too weighed down and padded with too much Aussie slang. You can have too much Aussie slang in a novel and it's just distracting and I couldn't go on. And I returned the book to where I brought it from. So uh, I've never done that before, but I uh, mentioned it to my wife. I said, "This, I just can't continue with this. And she's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, just, uh, yeah, just couldn't get into it because it was so distracting with all that Aussie slang. Uh, Brian Brown just laid it on too thick and uh, that book was bye-bye, see you later. I had uh, too much, too many good books to read to waste my time any further. So uh, that was a, it sounds pretty harsh, doesn't it? But uh, it's true. All right, my shortest book this year was 29 pages and that was uh, a short story from the Amazon Originals that came out uh, this year and that was called Best of Luck by Jason Mott which was a pretty good read. And the longest book I read was the Kirasagi Corpse Delivery Service Omnibus number four, which came in at 688 pages. But obviously with a manga title, um, I read those pretty quickly. So it was a fairly quick read for me. And let's move on to the most disappointing books of the year besides the last two. Uh, the, look, Count of Monte Cristo wasn't disappointing. I just couldn't really get into it, but uh, The Drowning was disappointing. But there were two others that really, really got my goat this year, which, you know, when I've enjoyed these two series a lot over the years and to have lackluster entries as the latest books, it actually annoyed the crap out of me. Ones I'm talking about here are the uh, Private Rome, which was the latest private novel out of the series by James Patterson. There was just no high stakes. It just wasn't exciting. Um, it was very underwhelming. And considering that uh, you know Jack Morgan has faced insurmountable odds and high stakes in previous books, it just did not have anything going for it. I read it and I finished it, but uh, yeah, it just wasn't uh, a very good entry. And the other one that I was also disappointed in was another James Patterson book, and that was called Obsessed, which was the latest Detective Michael Bennett uh, book in the series, which I absolutely adore. And this book was also underwhelming because there were no real high stakes involved for Michael Bennett, although he did have an altercation with uh, the killer and he got jabbed in the neck with a syringe and put him out of action for a couple of days, which wasn't really that great. And uh, I do blame a bit of the marketing of the book as well because the book marketing and the cover blurb hinted that uh, his eldest daughter might be uh, involved uh, or abducted by this uh, serial killer. So there was a, it alluded to her being taken because it said this one's going to hit Michael Bennett close to home and the daughter wasn't in danger at all. And there was a bit of procrastination on Michael Bennett's part about what to do about bullies um, uh, having altercations uh, with uh, two of his sons. So look, I've mentioned that uh, I am cautiously optimistic about the next two books that come in both series. If the next books aren't good, I will not continue reading the series because you know I've got too many other good shit to read than um, being bogged down with uh, disappointing entries into what have been two of my favourite series. So uh, just a bit of a rant there, but that is why both books were disappointments for me in 2023. Okay, now let's just go through uh, some of my reading goals. Uh, for next year. So I haven't locked this in yet, but already I'm thinking about my uh, 2024 Goodreads challenge. And I think 
I'm not going to lock this in, but I'm thinking I might go with 65 books because next year is going to be a pretty big year for fantasy for me. I'm going to be reading a lot more of it. Now, the thing is with fantasy, they uh, aren't really short books. Okay, I'm going to be getting into the Cosmia. There are trilogies that I'm going to want to want to read, which I went through in my last video that went up. And, you know, some of those are bricks. So I think I'm going to go easy on myself and just uh, have a cruisy, um, achievable 65, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm... I'm sort of one for sticking to um, my original target. So, I mean, it's very, very easy for you to go into Goodreads and change your target as the year goes on, but I don't think that's being very honest with myself. If I don't get to the 65, that's fine. I'll wear that, but I won't doctor the, um, the target uh, based on where I'm at. So we'll see how that goes, but uh, definitely a lot more fantasy next year. And there are series I want to complete as well and uh, read a few more books in, which I also went in with my last video as well. So you uh, be sure to check that out as well. But that is it for summing up my 2023. Looking forward to seeing you all next year. I'm looking forward to having a break for a few days from filming and hopefully um, read a whole heap to get over that line and we'll see how we go. But uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Offer up any feedback, of course, as always. And until the next video, guys, next year, happy reading.